So, hey, <laughs> so again, uh, you couldn't have chosen a better video to lead into this. So yeah, well done. Um, so yeah, everybody, my name is Zach Hater, and for the past, well, today I'm going to be taking you for a process on how you can heal your trapped emotional traumas. Um, so you can experience your best version of reality. And uh, afterwards, you will be able to get a copy of this PowerPoint for free that I'll organize through your email address or something like that if you want it. So, um, yeah, so I've been studying spiritual ideas, primarily focused on channeled information from non-physical extraterrestrial beings for the past eight years now or so. And um, yeah, I've come to this point now where I'm doing this presentation like this for the first time in my life and I'm feeling really excited to be here and I'm very happy to be sharing this with you all. So uh, yeah, so the perspectives that I share here today are what I've, yeah, six to eight years, just gets a bit blurry. Uh, yeah, so some of this stuff may seem very profound and a bit, I suppose, emotional healing is not we can all quite relate to it, but some of the parts that will be intertwined may be a bit like, oh, okay. But that's, again, use your own discernment. That is exercise your discernment muscle and choose what is right for you. Uh, yep, yeah, um, because all knowledge resides within your own heart. So there we go. Yes, please raise your hand if you've heard of the law of attraction before. Yep, yeah, that's everybody here. Cool. Okay, so... <laughs> yeah, definitely everybody here I would say is. So, yes, of course, we are vibrational beings living within a vibrational universe. And uh, when we are experiencing any kind of uh, strong, powerful emotions, more on the kind of downward spiral over there, um, we're going to start attracting experiences in our external reality that are a bit more challenging when we are feeling more quote unquote positive emotions, we're gonna start attracting more experiences that feel good in general. It's hard just to say good because everyone's perception of good and bad is different, but yeah, you're gonna have nicer experiences. And uh, who doesn't want those? I know I do, and I'd say the majority of people do, but I can't speak for them. So yeah, my favorite analogy of this, uh, I'm not going to name the uh, particular spiritual teacher that kind of has coined this term, but um, yeah, it's like we're a walking radio signal transmitter and we're on that particular frequency at one point, but we realize there's experiences that we could have that we would need to raise our vibrational frequency up in order to really live those out and to attract those into our reality. And yes, we do live in a quantum holographic universe where everything is interconnected and it really will always mirror back to you what you put out. For example, you, you're you having an argument with someone, they're going to mirror that back to you unless they can bring themselves and rise themselves above that. But a lot of the time, people will always just mirror back to you what you're putting to them. And so I'm a vibrational being living within a vibrational universe. And I understand that my vib vibrational offerings I provide in every moment um, create my reality. So why is it important for me to integrate my trapped emotions? Traumas that you've experienced in this lifetime and in previous lifetimes do affect your current vibration. So, and even if you're not aware of them, whether they're past life or this lifetime, they're still going to have an effect on your vibration. That includes pulling and pushing away from experiences, people, events in your life. Your traumas are stored in various parts of your body, organs, uh, your chakra centers, primary chakra centers, your sub chakra centers as well. 
And uh, they really do, like a ball and chain, weigh you down as you go about your path. Another useful way of understanding how we get anxiety and also we feel these heavy emotions is because these trapped emotions within us, these trapped traumas that we've experienced in the past, they do stick around, as I said, within our body. And then they manifest heavy emotional states. The heavy emotional states then manifest the harsh, anxious thoughts that we do often have. So it's true that thought always comes after feeling. <clears throat> so what do we do to sort this out? You do have the power to change anything you want within your internal world. And it will literally reflect back out into your external reality, just like a mirror again. And uh, yes, you have total free will on this planet. There's not many planets that have total free will with uh, human beings on, which have the full range of emotions available to them. This is a very unique setup that we have here. It's possibly one of the most challenging planets you can be on at this particular time as well. Um, so yes, you, do, you can make more positive vibrational offerings in order to manifest the quality of reality that you wish to experience. And you can also choose your belief systems to positively impact your vibration and add to that vibrational choice that you've made to then help those manifestations come about. And of course, you can integrate your current and past life trapped emotions, reducing them down layer by layer. It won't happen all of a sudden. You're not going to feel all of that emotion from all of your past lives all of a sudden, because that would be too much and you go into a form of psychosis. So they have to be done gradually, layer by layer. Otherwise, yeah. And eventually, you get to a point where it really does come to a point where you're feeling much lighter and your whole experience changes and they no longer become a part of your reality. And uh, yeah, this is, it's like in the video we watched earlier on about, he was talking about his neuro, uh, what was it, his neuro, neuroscience. neuroscience. And uh, it's these kind of things that people talk about personal development and training the mind. And that will take you so far but without addressing the underlying causes of why you're having resistance to certain things in your life, you're not going to get that far. So this is why this kind of directly delving into the pain is what's going to really take you to the next level within your own self. So yeah, we are darking the we are we are addressing the deepest, darkest parts of ourselves in order to transmute that heaviness into the light. That's the objective here. And uh, we do then start to create a brighter reality with new experiences that match our new vibration. And uh, that can be a good thing. Um, who here has heard of the term ascending to the fifth dimension? Yeah, okay. So if you are on the ascension path and then yeah, it's really important, especially at this time, to be really focusing on your trapped emotions. Um, because the whole idea is if you want to ascend to the fifth dimension, to fourth density, and become that human being um, at this once in a universal time moment on this, pla on this planet in particular, um, it's really important to take this very seriously. Your emotions are what are weighing you down from being able to ascend and evolve your entire consciousness and physical body into from third density to fourth density. So, okay. So yeah, this process is all gonna be about acceptance, harmonization and integration. Um, there's a lot of people that might tell you just ignore your emotions. Like, you know, that's the old way of seeing it. British stiff upper lip and all of this where, you, you know, you don't, you just, we've gone about on this planet. We've got our heads down here because we're leading with our heads. We're not leading with our hearts. And we're just, we've been traumatized so many times from relationships, from everything in our lives and abuse and all of this. And 
it's time to really delve deep into ourselves. So this is the introductory part. Yeah, so we have these times where we're triggered by something external in our reality. And this process works for that as well. And also if you wish to heal on demand as well in that way. But uh, yeah, I'd just like to say about how we, yeah, judging and labeling our experiences and it really, yeah, it can, yeah. We all have our own uni unique egoic mind filters that we perceive our reality through. We have everything coming into a funnel and everything that we've learned up until this point in our lives, we, we bring all of that external reality into our, into our mind and that's how we come to see things so and we have a choice then as to whether or not we assign what what we how we judge that particular experience or perception of reality if we judge and label our experiences yeah as negative we are ultimately going to push those things further away from us and the whole idea really is that we're wanting to make peace with it and integrate it into ourselves. So just be mindful as to how you how you assign things in your reality within yourself. There is always a positive aspect to every situation. I mean, say for example, you were just shot by someone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you, you were killed in that way. Um, there is ultimately a part of that that serves you. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. That's not really, um, yeah. So just try and focus on how an experience has served you because there's always a positive in every situation, something that can be learned and integrated as a lesson. And it serves you better to do that rather than only focusing on how it made you feel bad. So the process, this is the beginning now. Uh, yeah. So it really does help to really know what we've got to deal with within ourselves before we actually, before we actually know what we've got to focus on. You need a roadmap of such to know what you're going to be looking at. So this is the first step in taking just a pen and a paper and starting from a very young age, your earliest memories, and just relive or, well, go through from a young age right up until this point in your life now. Take some time doing it and just write down each of your experiences that you've had that you felt were particularly heavy in any way. And then apply a number to each one between 1 to 10 based on this level of intensity. Uh, for example, when I was 13, 14, 15, I went to the cinema and watched this film called Happy Feet. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but to me that film was not happy. Uh, it was all about a penguin who was a part of his colony and all of these penguins, they sing, but he couldn't sing, he could only dance and he danced really well, but he got entirely rejected and abandoned by his entire colony. Um, because he couldn't sing. And so I was then deeply traumatized by that film. Uh, I was depressed for about two weeks. And a lot of that is to do with my own abandonment and rejection traumas. We ultimately all, I would say pretty much 99% of people on this planet have abandonment and rejection traumas. Very much to do with the solar plexus, the sacral as well, even the heart, but it's, for me, that's a big deal, solar plexus, abandonment. So that's, that's, for example, that's one thing that I would write down on my list. So there we go. Um, and yes, it's true. So there are other levels of traumas that can be defined, but ultimately you can always trace them back to these three, abandonment, rejection, and abuse. And yes, they all stem from a feeling of lack, um, a lack of connection to source, a lack of, for example, you're being verbally abused by someone over there. And 
you're just feeling that disconnect. You're feeling like you're not being loved because source is ultimately pure love. Whereas you're being abused and then you feel like you're not loved. Um, so yeah, this is an important point I want to make because the next two steps, yes, they're very intimately connected. So I do invite you to uh, kind of experiment. There's no right or wrong, wrong way of doing this, but I do invite you to experiment with interweaving the two together um, as you feel is appropriate. But in a, from a linear, the way I've linearly defined them, it's good to process the emotion and then offer the compassion. You can do them both at the same time, but it's, it doesn't really make much of a difference. So, yep, take your list and pick one of the traumas that you feel you want to work on. Personally, personally, I would start with the most intense one, but it's really up to you, whichever one feels right to you in the moment. Uh, so, yes, of course, as I said earlier on, Recognize how the trauma has served you in some way, because ultimately it has. Ultimately, there is a lesson behind that trauma and that experience. And yes, there must be a benefit there. For example, and it sounds, it could even, it's quite a hard thing to come to term with, terms with sometimes, but say you're abandoned by a partner that you have a lot of love for, you then one way of observing and one perspective you can have on that experience is that you it's all about coming back into yourself it's all about loving yourself again because that's really what abandonment is all about is remembering that you can love yourself you can have enough love for yourself that you don't need to feel love from anybody else you you can just manifest that love within yourself again and connect with you again uh, connect with yourself again at a deeper level so now take a neutral observational stance and do not attach yourself to the experience. Uh, this is, can sound perhaps a little bit uh, conflicting here, saying, yes, we're going to integrate this trapped emotion, but now I'm telling you not to attach yourself. The idea here is that you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to, there's a fine balance between the two. You don't want to overly identify and associate yourself with that trauma, but at the same time you're, you just want to take a neutral stance at this particular point and just observe. Observe and witness the trauma as it occurred without trying to change it. Because it happened. You can't, well, you can re, re, subconsciously rewrite, rewrite timelines. It's, at this point, it's really important to accept what happened for what it is. It's all about acceptance at this point. We need to witness that version of our younger selves, exactly how he or she experienced that trauma. And at this point, you need to hone in and just be very, look for any subtle or very intense uh, sensations that may be coming up for you. It could be, it could be in your arm. It could be, it could be most likely gonna be in a chakra point. Um, it could be your heart, an organ, anywhere. But just feel for that. It could be, it could just, it could bring you out in tears straight away, or it could be so subtle that you're like, I'm not getting anything. But either way, just stay open to it. And if you're not getting anything, just continue to live out the timeline of that memory to the point where something does come up. And even if it doesn't, then in a way that shows that perhaps there's not a lot you need to work on in that regard, in regard to that trauma. So, and at this point, once you've located that sensation, put 100% of your, of your attention and your consciousness onto that area of your body and breathe. This is the really important part of this entire process now is just continually breathing. Even if you're in the midst of the most intense crying you've done in your entire life, still try and keep that breath going, um, even if you can't breathe <laughs> because you're crying so intensely. Uh, so, and yeah, at this point now, we're, we're just completely holding space for that emotion to expand itself. Let, let the breath just bring that emotion out and into the whole of your being. 
and let, let it penetrate every cell of your body. Let it go all around you and let you just feel it as much as you possibly can. And yes, it may be very painful. And this is a really hard part, but from my experience, it's by really feeling it through, no matter how much it hurts. That is where the gold lies at the end of the rainbow. So yes, just let it express itself as much as it naturally needs to. That's what's important. It has to completely let itself be a natural process. And it, the emotion in itself is almost a being in itself. That trauma is a being in itself. And it needs to have that space held for it by you in order for it to come back into you. Because it was fragmented. And yes, just keep letting it go. And keep letting yourself go with it. And uh, keep that breathing going. And uh, eventually you'll come to this point where, you know, when you've, you've been crying and then you come to this point where like, yeah, okay, I'm feeling a bit, this is hurting, my chest is hurting, I'm, I've just finished my crying, but I'm, I'm okay, I can, I, you know, you've lived out that memory in your mind and it's triggered all of this stuff and you, you've had all that emotion come up and now you're breathing still and it's okay, you're coming back to a more centered place. This is the, uh, this is the hot point, this is where we actually begin to harmonize and integrate the trauma back into ourselves. So compassion, love, forgiveness. Affection is just a bonus and it's helpful, but it's those t first three that that's where the, the vegan meat and potatoes are. So, um, yes. And of course, this is the thing. So you've just been through that crying state. You've just been through all of that heavy emotion and uh, you're now bringing in this compassion and, and it often does stir up further emotion. It really does, but it is a good thing. And uh, you'll start to feel as you're doing the compassion, you'll start to feel really good. You, were, you really will. And, um, and just continue to breathe through it. And uh, so now comfort that younger version of you with your unconditional love, your compassion, your support, and your willingness to be there. Hold him or her in your arms, perhaps even kissing that version of you on the forehead or any other way of offering affection to that version of you that you feel is right for you. Hold the space for that version of yourself to receive exactly what he or she needs, which is the compassion, that integration that you had pushed away at some point in a past life or in this life that you didn't want to focus or face at that time. That's what it needs. It needs your attention. It needs your love. And now you're bringing it into your whole self. Again, like I said earlier on about letting it come into every cell of your body, you're doing the same thing. And you're bringing it into the whole of who you are. Bring it into your heart and welcome him or her home. This is a very powerful couple of affirmations that you don't necessarily have to follow it like a script, but sometimes these affirmations are really quite potent in the way that they will make you cry even more, but it's just, you'll feel that love within you. You are valuable to me. I cherish and treasure your presence within me. You are welcome to come home now. I love you. I allow you to be here. I accept and embrace you as you are. I recognize you as a part of me that wants to be expressed and loved unconditionally. And again, you can say other affirmations and offer compassion and love and forgiveness in other ways that feel right to you in the moment. See him or her as being strong because ultimately, Everything is by agreement. When it comes to a relationship with another person at a higher level, in some cases during this incarnation or most often prior to this incarnation, you would have both agreed on a soul level to have that particular circumstance or that particular experience together. That was a co-creation that you both agreed upon in order to grow from. So on that, in that regard, it can make it easier to see and it, it can make it easier to see the experience from a, from a different perspective and 
make it easier to see why it's serving you as well. And yes, the experiences are powerful. They're incredibly powerful on this planet. And that's exactly what we wanted. So, and yes, know that you are better off in this moment for having accepted and welcomed that version of yourself back into the wholeness of your heart. Because you really are better off now. Continue to breathe and offer compassion until you come to a space where you feel lighter. As you continue to do it, even though at this point, if, you, if you've been crying, you may not have been crying, but if you have been crying for so intensely, you can, your chest might feel like it's concaved in. It could be quite painful. Your, your face might be hurting from the distorted expression you've had of crying the whole time. But even then, you're gonna notice from all this compassion and these affirmations you'll be, you'll be bringing in, you'll, you might hear, feel this very warm kind of glowing, throbbing, very nice feeling in your chest from your heart and the whole of your being even, then that, that will tell you then that you're feeling like you've harmonized that trauma. And uh, yeah, breathe into the strength that you feel and recognize that you are whole. You've integrated that part of yourself back into yourself. You are one with the entire universe, your emotions, your energy, and it's all included within you. Well done, you've now integrated and harmonized the layer of that trauma. So, and yes, you can do this process again for the rest of your list. And uh, yeah, it's, um, but just make sure you're ready. I wouldn't advise doing it straight away after that kind of experience because that's probably something very heavy you've just been through, possibly. And uh, of course, the more you practice this, the higher your overall vibration will become. The higher your vibration becomes, the higher your quality of reality you experience, and that's both internally about how you're feeling within yourself, and it'll also reflect out into your entire experience of your reality. And uh, yeah, just one last point. If you have felt wronged by someone else in relation to the experience of your trauma, see that they yeah, send, send them the same love and compassion and acceptance that you've just sent yourself because they do need it just as much. It's that shame and that guilt that they're feeling as well that you may not be aware of, that they really do, they really do need that kind of forgiveness as well. But it's not so much about you forgiving them. It's more important that you're forgiving yourself ultimately because all you really ultimately need to do is forgive yourself. But forgiving them as well serves as well. It can serve as well. So, and uh, yeah, it was co-creation again that you both agreed upon. And uh, yeah, and now you can have this experience. You've just released it. You've well, you haven't released it. You've integrated it, and you've learnt. You've you've become wiser from it. And uh, yeah, so that's the end of that. And thank you very much for this. Are there any questions? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. You covered it really well. Thank you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Cheers. There's a memory you have uh, that's longer than 18 months ago, and when you think about it, it brings stirs an emotional reaction. Then there's something that you haven't dealt with about that memory. Yeah. So if it stirs, it could be positive, I guess, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah. I guess, but still, is there's something that you haven't quite dealt with inside yourself to come to terms with that experience? So that's also a good way to kind of realize what those traumas are that you may be holding on to unconsciously, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. As soon as you get that kind of feeling, whether, I mean, if it, as you say, it's, if it's a positive experience that you're remembering, then do you feel you really need to work on that? But if it is what you would call a negative experience that you've, you feel that you haven't dealt with, then yeah, you're feeling that negative emotion around it because it needs to be, 
looked at. Otherwise, it's going to keep popping up and depending on the severity of it will depend on how much it's going to affect you as you continue to go about your life. So, yeah. Um, also, if you are doing the, the exercise, do you think you need to rerun the experience visually in your mind or is it just something that you kind of feel yourself in that place? It's both because people will, everyone will perceive it differently. Um, it, I didn't really make that clear though, that yeah, visualize the memory in your mind, in your third eye or just in your mind um, and play it out like a movie screen. Um, some people may not necessarily use their mind to do that, though. they might just feel it. Um, but yeah, usually it's going to be the mind. And uh, the other part of your question there was, yeah, what was the other part? That part, like feeling yourself in that, in that, as that person in the past. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, just go back into that memory and just, you, you can do it in the first person or you could even do it in the third person. Um, it doesn't really matter in that way. Um, but, oh yeah, what was it you said? You just said something there. You said, um, yeah, how much do we relive the memory? Like, when do we stop reliving the memory? Yeah, so that's something that I didn't add to this because it's it, it, it's a technicality that's always gonna that people are gonna ask about actually. So maybe I should, but it's uh, <laughs> the more you keep reliving that memory, and the more you're crying your eyes out over it. Like, if you are crying, you don't, it doesn't necessarily mean. But the more you're just sitting with it, it it serves you to a point. But doing that over and over again is almost coming from a place of lack. Like you feel like I know I must feel feel out this to the point where. <sighs> yeah, right. So that was kind of like without the internalizing it. That's kind of like that Joe Dispenza video we watched. It's on reliving it without doing the the rest of it. Then they're just coming back to that place. Yeah. And over mm. and over again, and living in the same That's state. It. Yeah, oh, well, which is the trauma, I guess. exactly. That's it. That's it. So that's why I would suggest in that regard, like, yeah, reliving the memory to the point where you've you've come to that calm and centered space after you've been breathing it out and you've let the emotion express itself um, and then moving on to the compassion. Um, so, yeah, kind of find that balance between reliving the memory and then moving on to the stage of adding the compassion to make it OK again. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Is that everybody, anybody else's questions or? Where did, you, um, where did you get that process? This process is a combination of the teachings of, it was all from, well, it's ultimately all channeled material. It's a combination of uh, our Archangel Michael, um, Yeshua, also known as Jesus, the Christ Consciousness, Ninth Dimensional Christ Consciousness, um, and also Adronus, which is, it's hard to just define what dimension they come from, but at the mo it, in one aspect of Adronus, he's an eighth dimensional angelic being from the star of Sirius. Um, where else the information come from? It's also understandings from Abraham Hicks as well, which is, if you heard of Abraham, yep. Uh, especially in the first part regarding law of attraction. Um, also the Pleiadian High Council of Seven, the Arcturian Council and Bashar. Uh, 